The Vice Chancellor and Chairman of Senate, Professor Ali Shidaba. Former Vice Chancellor, University of Medjugorje and Federal University, Dute, Professor J.D. Amin, who had the signing of the book with you for the book presentation. The Barsa, Ebony Resented, and other principal officers of the university here present. The Vice Chancellor of Boronset University, Professor Kumar Kiari Sandavi. Chief Medical Director of University of Medical Teaching Hospital. Everybody represented, I believe. Yes. The Chief Medical Director of the Hospital Management Board, Professor Arab Al Haj. The second valedictory lecturer, Professor B.A. Omotara. Provost, Deans, Head of Department, and Coordinators of Units. Professor Emeritus of the University of Medical here are present. Members of Senate, distinguished invited guests, amongst which include the Mayor of Borough State, KBSC Al Haji Hassan Al Yusuf, and his delegation, elder private medical practitioner in Medjugorje, Dr. Ogun Bin, alongside with his wife, a retired Joseph of the Supreme Court. They also here. Our dear students, members, of the press, ladies and gentlemen. Now, having established the protocol for this program, uh, it is my honor and pleasure to invite the Vice Chancellor, who is Chairman of the Senate, to come up and make his introductory remarks, as well as introduce the second valedictory lecturer of the university, Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir. One, as it was said, the protocol has been observed, very well established. However, may I still make some specific recognitions. The former 
Vice Chancellor, University of Maiduguri, and Federal University Duse. The Vice Chancellor of Borno State University. Provost, Dean's, Directors, Heads of Departments and Units. Emeriti professors, they are present. Members of the Senate of this great university. Distinguished invited guests. And I understand some of the well-established names in the medical profession are here with us. Notably, Dr. Ogumbi and his dear wife, a former justice of the Supreme Court. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to welcome you to the second valedictory lecture of the University of Maiduguri. This lecture will be delivered by a very renowned scholar who has been in the service of this university for a very long time. And this is no other person than our dear Professor Baba Tunji Abayomi Omotara of the Department of Community Medicine. I repeat again, Professor Omatara is of the Department of Community Medicine, College of Medical Sciences. <laughs> Professor Omatara has also written a book titled The Odyssey of My Life which chronicled his over four decades of selfless and unbroken services at the University of Maiduguri from 1982 to date. It is a rare opportunity, a very rare one, in the life of an individual to have reached the age of retirement, and also to present or to document a book on the life spent in the academia. I wish to, on behalf of myself, the Senate, and the entire university community, thank Professor Omotara for having the time and energy to deliver a validatory lecture. The university has not been so regular with validatory lectures. The first lecture was delivered 15 years ago, precisely on the 6th of February, 2006, by Professor Idris Mohammed of the Department of Medicine, College of Medical Sciences. Since then, we never had a validatory lecture. We thank God we are having one today. The university has come of age. It is now 46 years since inception. We have, we have seasoned academics who are about reaching retirement age. We want to urge our senior colleagues to consider giving valedictory lectures before they bow out of the system. Their years of service are very rich in wisdom and knowledge. 
We want to tap on their wisdom and experiences. I therefore humbly call upon our seniors to please share their wisdom and experiences with the upcoming generations. I once again express our appreciation to Professor Babatunji Abayomi Omotara for sharing his life experiences with the rest of the academia. On this note, may I invite Professor Babatunji Abayomi Omotara to be on the stage, please. You're welcome, Professor. I now wish to present to you the profile of today's lecturer. Professor Babatunji Abayomi Omotara was born on Saturday, September 22nd, 1951, at Adoikid, to Chief Enoch Adeleke Omotara and Chief Mrs. Rebecca Olavisi Omotara of Igbajo, Ocean State, both of blessed memory. He began his primary education in January 1958 at United Brothers School, Ibada, Anglican Primary School, Auchi, but completed it at the Baptist Day School, Ibajo, in 1963. In 1964, he started his secondary school education at Baptist High School, Iwo, where he was popularly known as the boy in glasses. But he later left for London in 1967, where he continued with his secondary education at Battersea County Comprehensive Secondary School. He sat for the Oxford University O level and got credits in eight subjects and A levels with very good results in chemistry, physics, and zoology in 1968, 1969 and 1971, respectively. He won the prize for the best chemistry student at the A-level examination for that year. As a result of his academic and moral discipline, young Babatunji's leadership quality was recognized by electing him as one of the school's prefects in 1970, a rare feat for black Africans in that era of racism in England. In January, 1972, his parents in pursuit of the best for their young promising son sent him to the United States of America for his university education. Thus, he started his first degree in science at Central State University, Edmond, Oklahoma, but later transferred to Oklahoma City University to complete the degree and graduated with a GP of 3.3 .3 out of 4.0 points. That was in May, 1976. In August of the same year, he gained admission into the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center School of Public Health for a master's degree in environmental health 
and completed the program in July 1978 with a GP of 3.5 out of 4.0. As a result of his excellent academic performance at the master's level, he was immediately admitted into the PhD program of the same university. Completed his PhD in environmental health and epidemiology in May 1982. Among, and he was among the top five graduating doctoral students for that year. He was also among the first crop of environmental epidemiologists in the world. And definitely the first in Nigeria. After graduation, Professor Babatunji Omatara had many offers to work and remain in the United States of America. But because of his love for his fatherland, he decided not to accept any of the offers. And therefore chose to come back to Nigeria. So he was not also bothered by the cultural shock that, or the dilemma that he might face if you were to come back to Nigeria at that time, having spent most of his formative years in the Western society. Instead, he took the bull by the horns and accepted the offer of employment made to him by the University of Maiduguri. Even though he was also offered the same position by the University of Ileife, now Obafemiya Ono University, in his home state of Oshun State. He therefore assumed duty as lecturer two in the Department of Community Medicine of this great university on September 15, 1982, exactly 15 years after leaving for London, which was on September 16, 1967. Having noted that he had not served his one-year mandatory National Youth Service Corps, NYSC, he arranged to use the initial one year to undergo this in 1985. He was promoted lecturer one, and in 1988, he became senior lecturer. His promotions to the ranks of reader and professor of environmental health and epidemiology in 1990 and 1992 respectively were accelerated due to his, due to his prolific writing and academic diligence. Professor Babatunji Omatara has won many academic and professional awards, including the Dean's Honors Role Oklahoma City University, 1973, the Association of Black Personnel, Outstanding Academic Award, USA, 1979, Fellow of the Royal Society for Public Health, 1993, and Fellow of the Faculty of Public Health, 2002. He is a member of many national and international professional bodies, such as the American Public Health Association, Association for Epidemiological, Epidemiologic, Epidemiologic Research, International Society for Ep Environmental Epidemiology, International Society for Exposure Analysis, Nigerian Public Health Association, Epidemiological Society of Nigeria, Royal Society for Public Health, and Faculty of Public Health. Royal College of Physicians, 
UK, Scotland, and Wales. Professor Omachara has also served and is still serving as consultant to many national and international health organizations, including Federal Minister of Health, Borno State Minister of Health, Borno State Environmental Protection Agency, UNICEF, WHO, BIFEX, MacArthur Foundation, USAID, John Hopkins University, Applied Diarrhea Disease Research, UNFAFPA, Helen Keller International, APIN, MEPIN, Family Health Services, and Health Partners International, UK. He was a visiting scholar, epidemiologist to University of Hull, York, and Leeds in 1995. He was the principal investigator for the Men Africa multinational study involving Senegal, Mali, Chad, Niger, Ghana, Nigeria, and Ethiopia in collaboration with the London School of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene between 2009 and 2012. I have not had you giving me an <laughs> Professor Omatara was also the principal investigator for the emollient study, a multinational study involving Nigeria, Tanzania, and Ethiopia in collaboration with the Institute of Child Health. University College London between 2011 and 2014. He is also the patron of many professional associations. He has served in various capacities in the university. He was Deputy Hall Master, Sir Kashim Ibrahim Imam Hall, Member University Sanitation Task Force, Examination and Timetable Coordinator, College of Medical Sciences, Coordinator Health Systems Research, University of Maiduguri, Chairman Research Committee, College of Medical Sciences, and Chairman Curriculum Committee, College of Medical Sciences. He is one of the foundation members of the college and has contributed immensely to the successful graduation of over 3,000 medical doctors. Over 3,000 medical doctors produced by the college since inception. He has supervised many postgraduate candidates, both at masters and doctoral levels, including a former vice chancellor of this great university. <laughs> Professor Babatunji Omotara is a dynamic researcher and teacher who apart from his primary assignment in the College of Medical Sciences also teaches in other faculties of the university. He is well known for his outstanding research capability, which has enabled him to collaborate with many of his colleagues outside the college on the aspect of public health, community medicine, in their respective fields. He and his team in his department are the recipient of the 2012 Erickson Foundation Award. And that award was for excellent research in aging and public health. 
an Asian and public health section of 140th American Public Health Association in San, Fran in San Francisco, the highest gathering of public health professionals in the world. The title of the paper presented by Professor Omotara was an assessment of the determinants of healthy aging among the elderly in Northeast Nigeria. Also in 2018, he presented another paper at APHA meeting at San Francisco or San Diego this time around, not San Francisco, on, on this, this subject now, correlates of risk factors of cervical cancer among female undergraduate students of a tertiary institution in Northeastern Nigeria. He has more than 100 publications in both national and international journals, including three books, three chapters in books, module four, course materials, and Vinage in addition to many other occasional and miscellaneous publications. In addition, he has presented papers at over 20 conferences and workshops, both at national and international fora. He is on the editorial board of seven journals all of which are currently on shelves. He was a team leader for the technical review and data management committee for the Federal Ministry of Health Intervention on Health and Nutrition Emergency Response Project in Borno State. He was a member of the past, the immediate past governing council of the University of Nigeria. He is widely traveled. He is happily married to Modupe and blessed with three children. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you Professor Babatunji Abayomi Omotara to deliver the second valedictory lecture of the University of Thank you, VC, uh, the Vice Chancellor, for that elaborate uh, presentation. I would uh, crave the indulgence of the audience to what the moment you are on me. I got a the indulgence of the audience to please uh, rest on the existing protocol because our time is fast spent. The topic of my lecture, my lecture, lecture, is four decades of community based medical education and research in Northeast Nigeria challenges and prospects. Thank God Almighty, the Omnipotent, 
omniscient, the I am that I am, and the creator of the universe, for his mercy that has endured for life, for, that has endured in my life and that of my family, particularly for granting me the opportunity to give this second valedictory lecture. In the, the second valedictory lecture of our great institution. Uh, this is the outline of the lecture. I present the introduction, evolution of community-based education, data collection and analysis, results and discussion, community-based community -based public health intervention in the Northeast, challenges, prospects, conclusion, and Acknowledgements. Introduction. The overall objective of community based education, CBE, is to produce doctors of high quality in sufficient numbers to meet the health needs of the nation at community and hospital levels. The aim is to produce community oriented doctors who are able and willing to serve their communities and deal effectively with health problems at primary, secondary, and tertiary levels. The success is, depends on the degree of integration with innovation in community health services. Traditional medical approach to illness in individuals has little impact on the community. Why? Because most illnesses are due to a complex mix of social, economic, and political factors, which are linked with unhealthy uh, behavior and adverse environmental factors such as poverty, social dysfunction, as uh, is being uh, experienced in most parts of the country in terms of insurgency and civil conflicts, smoking, air and water pollution lack of exercise, alcohol, and substance abuse. Table one describes the characteristics of community-based education in some Nigerian medical schools. Community-based education in Nigeria predates the World Federation of, of Medical Education and the establishment of towards unity for health, tough, by 24 and 17 years, respectively. The University of Lagos placed the trail in 1962, followed by the University of Ibadan a year later. The community-based education in other medical schools in Nigeria have been described by Alausa, that's that of uh, BUK, Omatara, that's that of um, uh, our great university here, Jinadu and Davis Adejubo in um, that of um, Obafemi Aulo University, Ayedu and Omanisi, that of University of Ilori, and the Department of Preventive Medicine, as uh, described that of Ibadan in 1997, and our dear uh, Shehu, Mori Shehu, described that of ABU in 2007. Most of the medical schools started community-based education almost immediately after their establishment with a range of four to 28 weeks duration. Most have multiple sites with distance ranging from one to 350 kilometers from base. Our own community-based education at the University of Meduguri has two components urban and rural as described by Omatara et al, 1992. The urban component had been implemented almost immediately after the establishment of the medical school, which involved visits to health related establishments to acquaint medical students with the first hand experience on their philosophy, functions and operations as it affects public health practice. Such establish, uh, establishments include 
water treatment plant, Mandi Market, Osepa, Abatua, industries such as metal shoe factory, for low aluminum and enamel wire factory, power holding company of Nigeria, PACN, leather tannery factory, National Union of Road Transport Workers, Epidemiological Unit, and primary health care centers. A report is reaching at the end of the posting using a guideline provided in the department. Uh, this picture shows uh, some members of the college at the point in time at the, uh, during uh, the exit of uh, Professor Elgas, a long time professor, uh, head of study in the College of Medical Sciences. Seated right there, right there in the middle. To his uh, right is uh, Professor Abbas, who was the uh, CMAC then. On his right is uh, Professor uh, Professor Idris Mohamed, the first uh, presenter of the first biology lecture. Uh, here is uh, my former uh, late Professor Padunu. Uh, there is Professor Idrissa, right there. Uh, Professor Ambi is uh, there. It's my humble self. That's uh, Chief Dr. Mubi here. That is, uh, this is uh, Dr. Wafada, former director of the uh, uh, Hospital Services Ministry of Health. And Professor Lee Dogo is there, and also Professor Bindigam. Uh, that was taken some years back. Now, evolution of CBE. Initially, there were constraints of logistic and infrastructure uh, 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 to take the students to the local government. Therefore, the first phase between 1983 and 1985 was in Meduguri. Students undertook individual research projects on topics of their interest. One out of three suggested topics was approved for each student, which was supervised by staff of the Department of Community Medicine using a style guide as, as was described earlier. As, as described earlier, and students were allowed to collect data from any part of the country. Second phase was between 1986 and 1988 in some local government area of the Bongola state. Uh, we used 10 basic health centers, uh, which were available at that time. Students were formed into groups, as, as described by Amatara et al, 1992. And um, this was necessitated by the increase of the intake in students because we could not continue with individual projects. So we had to break the students into groups. The objectives of the CBE were to provide supervised clinical services, community service, and conduct research projects, which was approved using the method described earlier. The third phase uh, was between 1989 and 2012. Local government was initially involved in 1989. However, Obama and Goza uh, local governments was, were added in 1990. Madagali local government joined in 1996 with the establishment of Medical Comprehensive Health Center to complement Bank Comprehensive Center commissioned by late Professor Liboyeras of Kuji. Uh, this facilitated smooth, smoother running of the program for both staff and students, and it also improved relationship with health authority in the local government area. And finally, it satisfied the federal government directive for university to partner with local government authority in developing primary health care. Two consultative meetings were held before and after the students 
uh, hosting to assess students' performance and plan for the next hosting. Meetings was rotated between LTAs and the college. The outcome of the meetings provided solutions to most problems encountered by the students. Hosting con continued until 2012, despite the onset of the surgency in 2009, due to the resilience and commitment of staff and students, and indeed that of the University of the Dubuque. The current phase began in 2013, when it became impossible to access the local government areas. Activities which were restricted to general local government and Medubuli Metropolitan Council. Safety of staff and students was of paramount importance in the reflection of, in the, in the selection of places of CBE. All necessary display of identity was strictly guarded against. Data collection. Record of all research projects conducted in the Department of Community Medicine from 1983 to 2021 were solved. There was difficulty in reviewing projects, especially those of the first five years. Many were found missing from the Department of Community Medicine. Effort was Justified to achieve as many as possible from other sources, including Scarborough Library, University of the Liberty Teaching Hospital Library, Provost Office, and also phone calls were made to all students, both in Nigeria and abroad. A total of 505 projects were retrieved out of the approximately 560 projects conducted in the department from inception, constituting 90%. Each project was categorized according to the various disciplines in public health. Results are presented in tables below in accordance to the basis of the community based education of the College of Medical, of the College of Medical Sciences in the University of Virginia as described earlier on. Table two presents categories of research projects in various parts of Nigeria, that is from 1983 to 1985. 84 of the approximately 120 research projects conducted in the first phase of community-based education were in three, constituting 70%. Retrieval rate. Epidemiology of communicable and non communicable diseases topped the list, constituting 54.76%. Demography and environmental health followed. Community ophthalmology, health education, social and rehabilitative health, etc., featured with less, while others did not feature at all. Consequently, Nine out of the 13 research categories were featured in this phase. Interesting to note that six of the 17 projects retrieved for the first Paulian set specialized in the same category of their project title. One, two in reproductive health, that's obstetrics and gynecology, one in pediatrics, one in medicine, one in medical microbiology, and one began with pediatrics, but found public health to be more congenial. And here's the picture of the first Aryan set. You'll be surprised to know there. Yeah, we are for a family there. I think we have a Okay, yeah. Next to me, for a family. I've been there. And next to me, there's school. Professor Abasa. Good time, Mr. Professor, I'll be there. 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 I'll be there.
suppose so the carbon was upside, take in care of some family matters. <laughs> there were three categorizes beside projects in Seoul, Adamawa, local government field. 24 of the 30 research projects conducted in Seoul local government were retrieved with 80% retrieval rate. See, we're improving 70 to 80. Epidemiology of communicable diseases and reproductive health top the list at 33%, 33.3% each. Epidemiology of non communicable diseases ranked next. Community diagnosis, environmental health, health management, and primary health care featured less. Others did not feature at all. Overall, research was conducted in eight of the 13 research categories in this phase. Table four. Uh, presented uh, categories of research projects in Bama, Boza, Konduga, and Madagali local government of Bono and Adamawa states between 1989 and 2012. Of the approximately 230 research conducted in four local government areas between 1989 and 2012, 213 were retrieved, constituting 92.6%. That improved. We start conducted in 11 of the 13 categories except community, dental health, and medical ethics. Mark, we will note the marked improvement in the coverage of disciplines in public health from 8 to 11. Epidemiology of non communicable diseases topped the list, constituting almost one third. 32.4% of the total research projects conducted during that phase. Reproductive health and health management and primary health care followed constituting 23% and 18.3% respectively. Research project in epidemiology of communicable diseases ranked forth because of the preponderance of the Incidence of non communicable diseases and reproductive health, especially maternal and child health. Community ophthalmology featured least among the 11 categories where research was conducted. Boza and Bama LGA had the highest number of research cat categories with um, 66 constituting 31% and 60 constituting 20.2%, respectively. Uh, this is why, because they provided better logistic assistance to the department and also the medical local government. It's not as if Kanduga didn't. Kanduga local government also provided good logistic assistance, but has low carrying capacity and also its proximity to base, proximity to the College of Medical Sciences, also lend the student to abuse uh, the system because usually they are they don't stay there they will be in the in, in, in their hostel and when they know we are coming they rush there so we, we usually did not post too many students there uh, during that period we have a set of 1990 this is a, a set of 1990 a, a, a group uh, the class of 1990 where we have uh, Professor Ngada, Ngada Aruna Ngada is there. Professor Sudeiru Yasu is also there, it's in the UK, and Dr. Helene Michelia of the State uh, Primary Healthcare Development Agency. They were part of this great set. And also, we have the uh, Mensa athletes, they're also of that, of that uh, uh, base. The, um, these are the athletes. From here, you can see Peter, Dave, uh, Professor Tella, the former Minister of Education, Dave, 
uh, this uh, table seven is just similar, giving uh, the distribution of the uh, of the diseases. Table seven displays the distribution of research projects conducted by medical students of the College of Medical Sciences, University of Edinburgh between 1983 to 1921. I mean, 2021. As noted earlier. Projects were conducted in all disciplines of public health during the period, albeit in varying proportions. Challenges. Protect, uh, protracted insurgency has drastically affected community based education in the Northeast. It hindered community diagnosis, hindered community ophthalmology, and other essential programs. Lack of, we also experienced lack of multidisciplinary approach in the CBE. At the beginning, many departments keyed into the um, into the uh, uh, into the program, but because of lack of accommodation and incentives, um, they gradually uh, uh, withdrew their services. Also, lack of grants to execute quality and cutting edge research is, is, a, is a limiting factor in the progress of community based education. We need good grants, and the grants that are mostly available are obtained from foreign donors who usually come with their own set agenda, which has to be followed. Prospects. There are numerous benefits of community based education for students, for the three stakeholders. And the three stakeholders are students, the community, and the institutions. It allows medical schools to fulfill social contracts to engage with, with and serve greater community. It provides good learning template for students. Develop basic skill skills of history taking, acclimatizes them to rural community, and it also facilitates specialty choice, as we had observed in the first uh, set of 21. Six of them followed their project title to specialize. Focus, uh, it also focuses on household. Uh, it allows interaction with the community. It gives them first time opportunity to understand the dynamic interplay between culture, religion, and other factors influencing their health and health seeking behavior. It improves the clinical and communication skills of students. It favorably challenged, sorry, favorably changed their attitude towards rural practice which is very essential. It engenders teamwork and spirit, which is sign for non. Our legal uh, professionals uh, bring your indulgence to use this term, which is sign for non in medical practice. And uh, we have also uh, corroborated all these in some of our studies. For the community, Community involvement needed improvement, and we, we work towards that because with our interaction and the meetings, the consultative meetings we had, we were able to improve that. And as we have described in 2004 and 2006, uh, community based education also attempts to bridge the inequality gap in healthcare services between rural and urban areas. Uh, these are some of the comments of the people in the community uh, from the, some of the researches that were conducted. That they consequently became more receptive to the program after realizing its benefits. That was in Konduga. All our initial fears were laid as people came to accept the family planning advices offered as well as other health education topics that was in Goza. Our interest grew in their activities that was in Bama. 
Reasons for liking students' activities include it made us more productive, more conscious of prevention, and encourages our health promotion activities in Condola. Uh, home treatment, which save people transport costs, health education on environmental health, specifically latrine care for the mama, and the community health education is offered at the village health house, which uh, attracts more people for longer period. They also see and examine and treat people on the spot. That was in Gozan. They were describing the activities of our students for community-based education. It encourages our children to want to read medicine. Guess where, Bama? So, so if we have been continuing, we'll be having an upsurge of application for MBBS. I know we had some uh, people from Bama, uh, Professor Mohammed, uh, Dr. Waziri, the two Waziris, they are also from Bama. So we can, if we could have improved on that. Community-based uh, education has helped to improve the town and gown relationship between the university, local government, and state authorities. Uh, that is uh, in the, the third um, uh, stakeholders now. Development of strategic partnership was established among the three. Community-based education over the years has provided baseline information for all 13 disciplines in the areas of operation. Most of the interventions and exploration studies have made immense contribution to the improvement of health indices of the people of Northeast Nigeria. Uh, these are the, now to finish with the community-based education, we are now into the research activities, my research activity in the Northeast over the last four decades. But I'm only going for time, uh, for the lack of time, I'm going to go to, I'm only going over two or three of them. Well, I'll go over the first one. The first one was in 1987, which was actually funded by Cooking and Bono State Ministry of Health. Uh, uh, there was an outbreak of uh, hysteria among Kose friars, mainly women and their children, and we were called. So we went to Ngoshin Sama, that was my first experience. Uh, it took us one and a half hours to climb the hill to Ngoshin Sama. I wonder how many in this uh, hall have been there. We got there and uh, we interviewed the, the women, and what we could um, imply was that probably the, the oil they were using to fry the gose was contaminated. So we took a sample of the oil, cut it, and looked for a place to analyze it. Unfortunately, he stayed in my office for long. I couldn't do anything with it, but thank goodness uh, the hysteria finally went away. On its own. The second one was uh, 1994, you said, uh, applied diarrhea disease research. At uh, that time, diarrhea disease was very common, was killing many of our children, and there was no need for that because it only needed very simple interventions, home interventions, by application of salt sugar solution. So, you said, through the applied diarrhea disease research, you are interested to find out why was the incidence of diarrhea uh, 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 high, especially in Borno State. So we looked into uh, the reasons among two major tribes, calories and, uh, and um, Pura, local uh, Pura ethnic groups. Uh, mainly in MMC and in our local government, also in Bama local government. What we found out that most homes did not have the basic ingredients to prepare sugar source solution. And they didn't even have it. They didn't have the ability and they did not have it uh, ready. Uh, and uh, we made appropriate suggestions. We even trained uh, the influenced mothers in the, in the communities 
like Komche in Banki, to train them to be able to train other mothers to be able to prepare the source sugar solution and made available the research uh, grant, made available basic things like salt spoons uh, and uh, clean water. The next one is the um, is the big uh, Men Africa, Men Africa, which the uh, Vice Chancellor alluded to uh, during uh, my introduction. He, it was held in uh, uh, within seven countries within the Men Africa. I mean the Meningitis Belt. Meningitis Belt is cut across Africa, mainly West Africa and East Africa. And several countries were invited to write proposal, were invited to London to write proposal and look at the carriage. Uh, uh, the, the, the meningitis bacteria is carried in the throat and we want to look at the carriage rate because many people are carrying it who are asymptomatic, but they have the potential of infecting others. Unfortunately, we could not finish that project because of the insurgency, we have to withdraw, we have to be withdrawn uh, at 20, by 2012. The next was the ammonia study, which was also funded by Bill Gates and Institute of Child Health, uh, coordinated by Institute of Child Health in London, was to look at uh, newborn care. We still have an uh, unacceptably high proportion of uh, newborn, newly neonatal deaths, that's the death of children before they become uh, a one month old. And we were, we were curious about why was this happening in Northeast. And so we looked at the a newborn care between uh, Kanuris and Pura, people of the Northeast. And the study was conducted in Makumeri and our local government. Um, I had uh, the privilege of working with a uh, uh, medical sociologist, Dr. Ruth Danos, whom I, I believe is here, uh, on this project, and it was quite rewarding. The four countries involved were Nigeria, two, 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 two centers were picked from Nigeria, uh, Meluguri and Ife, uh, OAU, and also Ethiopia and Tanzania. Uh, the last one is the intervention by the Federal Minister of Health on nutrition uh, in, in the Northeast due to the, um, due to the um, insurgency. And this took, uh, was in three phases, and we served as the monitoring and evaluation uh, agent for the program. Uh, this is map summarizes all my intervention areas, all local government in Bono State, Yobe State, a few in Bauchi, a few in Gombe, a few in Adamawa, but none in Taraba State. And these are some of the pictures. Uh, this is during advocacy uh, visit for the Men Africa in, in uh, Mary. Others, we have uh, Professor Abudu there, my uncle self, while Professor Yaya was out there scouting for the uh, 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 Lawan. Here is the Men Africa team. Sorry, here's the team uh, where we, we, um, we got the award in San Francisco as uh, my uncle self, my wife. And the Federal Ministry of Health team we met at San Francisco at the venue of the African Public Health uh, uh, Conference. And this is me there accepting that award that was announced in 2012. And this is the award to the glory of God and to the honor of the University of Midugudi. I would present this to Professor Daura. He was the VC then, and he was quite related. 
and this is the uh, Emolian team in Cape Town, South Africa, and that's uh, also design of that at the back. And that was not very clear. And that's the team from the four centers, including uh, the team from ICM, Institute of Child Health London. And these are some of the equipment that were equated to our Department of Medical Microbiology of the University of Illinois and UMCA through the Men Africa project. These are very, very sophisticated and expensive improvement. At that time, they were worth by 50 million. That was in 2009. These are deep freezers that you don't find anywhere. In fact, the residents wrote to me to tell me that it has actually facilitated their training in medical microbiology. And this is the Men Africa Consortium from seven different countries. And this was taken in Senegal in 24. Conclusion. Community-based education and research have been rewarding and fulfilling. It has afforded me the opportunity to give my best to my country and kind. I appeal to the, to the excellencies of Borno, Yobe, Adamawa, Karaba, Bauchi, and Gombe states to partner with the University of Midugui and other medical schools to improve community-based education for the benefit of the community. The College of Medical Sciences should ensure multidisciplinary involvement in community-based education. We should note that public health professionals are highly are in high demand all over the world, especially in Nigeria, with our worsening health situation. Therefore, we need to treat them with soft hands. We are becoming almost extinct in the universities. People would rather go and work where they can get more money. And we, we know that our, our situation here is not very, very encouraging. Public health professionals, sorry, uh, the Vice Chancellor, I want to thank you for the keen interest that you have shown in the department. And you have told me personally that you are ready to work with our head of department to give us what we need, what we lack. I wish to employ you to continue uh, in, in this uh, uh, exploit so that we can improve the staffing situation in the Department of Community Medicine. Acknowledgements. Once again, I acknowledge the divine favor of God Almighty over my life and that of my wife and children. My late parents, Chief Enoch Adeniki and Chief Mrs. Rebecca Oladisio Matara, the architect of my success in life by providing me the best education they could afford. May their souls rest in peace. My late uncle and aunt, Barista Isaac Dokumba Balola, and Rachel Olapisi Babalola for filling in the gap in the absence of my parents. May their souls also rest in peace. I also wish to thank and appreciate my better half, my jewel of inestimable value, a beautiful wife, my mother, Mrs. Christiana Wadupe Omatara for continuing where my mother stopped. My children, Adeliki, Polake, and Benga, for adding joy to my life by giving me the opportunity to feel the pleasure and anxiety of fatherhood. I also thank you, Kikeloma, Ibrahim, Omatara, Omati, and Joladi, uh, Michelia, I'm grateful for what you are to me. 
uh, and, uh, uh, and thank you for your love and support. To my sisters and brother, Remy, Titi Layo, Kumi Layo, and Olushemu, I thank you for your love, support, loyalty, and cooperation. I thank all my colleagues with whom I have collaborated on various research projects for, from the college, faculties of art, education, social sciences, and management sciences. I particularly acknowledge those who are my students, but are now professors and consultants in various departments in the college and other faculties for allowing me to mentor and share my experience with them. I look forward to continuing doing so. I thank Professor Emeritus Norchil in absentia CFR for his support and remarkable resourcefulness. To my colleagues in the department, I remain grateful for your support and love over the years. I want you to know that I remain part of you. Even though I'm dying, I remain part of you. I am very grateful to my colleagues whose contributions to this manuscript are invaluable. Professor Jose Ande was on tiring effort in locating missing projects. Dr. Bello Ibrahim for analyzing the data. Professors Adito Eje and Adewale Oyeyemi and Mala Monsieur Kumar for their editorial services. Professor Mercedi Baba for our intuition. Dr. Garba Sambu for generating the map. Professor Shaibu Yaya, Mary Amodu, Dr. Zara Udili, my HOD, Dr. Fatila Wan Bukar, Aisha Abdufati, Dr. Umar, Pedro Umar, Musa Iko, and admin, all administrative staff and technical staff of the Department of Community Medicine for their various assistance during the preparation of this lecture. I also acknowledge the presence of my adopted Kaduri families here. I have Alagia Asami and the children of late Alagia Bukar. Now welcome. I also want to thank Chief Doctor and Chief Justice Obubili for honoring my education to be here. God bless you, Richard. I wish to also acknowledge all the vice chancellors, chief medical directors and medical directors under whom I have served. I appreciate their, uh, their tremendous support and respect over the years. I must not conclude this acknowledgement without appreciating my students and the good people of the Northeast who have made my sojourn, who have made my sojourn here memorable and fulfilling. The le this lecture is dedicated to all of you because without you, there will be nothing to talk about. Finally, I wish to apologize to anyone that I might have inadvertently offended by my action or inaction in the course of my interactions in the past four decades. Please forgive me. I thank you all for listening. As can you know? Usi Nieti Daluso Eshebuko Bandi Mesa Lukuri, Bandi for no state.
Ah, uh, sorry, I got five the way there. Uh, I would have been summoned to the palace. I wish to specially acknowledge our Oba here, yeah. Oba of Yoruba. You know how traditional we are. The name of Yoruba, Oba Yoruba, I like the use of Allah. You're welcome. And his entourage, and his entourage, he has his cabinet and all the chiefs. Please, can I, can you stand up for recognition? Thank you very much. God bless you for coming. Wish to matter guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's not for me to say thank you to Pop for the wonderful presentation. The vice set up may say so at the appropriate time. Uh, this has brought us to the full presentation segment of this program. Uh, actually, time is not a friend here, uh, but I believe we must remind the little of the time that we have. Uh, Mr. Vice Chancellor, with your permission, I would like to invite Sir Professor Walesha Dipo to anchor this segment, please. The chairman of the occasion, this is our chief host, the vice chancellor of this great university, Professor Liu Shigaba. Please permit me, sir, to, to rest on the established, already established protocol. As the saying goes, there is a season or time for everything under the sun. Time to born, the time to die, the time to enlist for service, and the time to disengage from service as you're witnessing today. The first segment, Chairman, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the first segment of today's special event is an overview of the stewardship of a learned professor, Professor Matushi Bayoni Motara, as an academic. These are just been concluded at the valedictorian lecture. Now is the time to see the whole picture of the life of this professor before the court is finally drawn. And the whole picture has been packaged for us in very neat fashion of the book titled by the Odyssey of my life. By the autobiography of Professor Matuji Omotara, I'd like to save you the polyanconiums and go straight to the point. The next thing is for the book to be reviewed. And to do this for us, the gentleman, very quiet, the one time Secretary General of the Committee of Vice Chancellor of Nigerian University. The so one time chairman standing committee of private universities, Scopo. The two time vice chancellor for the University of Nigeria and the Federal University of Tutsi. Currently, the dean of the school, 
Ladies and gentlemen, put, put your hands together for President Kabila. Thank you very much. I will make sure to go to one of the better lecturers at the university. Um, Mr. Vice Chancellor and many distinguished uh, invited guests, uh, given a very big task of reviewing the life of a 69 year old academic. <laughs> a lot of experience, a lot of music, and he lived in so many places. Uh, and it's so difficult to do it without taking. The actual time for the presentation of the of the book. Um, but I'm a bit consoled that the Vice Chancellor has touched on a number of the issues that I wanted to, to, to mention. I have also had a lot of the things that I wanted to say in the valedictory lecture itself. Uh, so while I was sitting waiting to, to deliver my own uh, paper, I had to Look for a pen from my good friend, uh, Professor Ambe. Uh, I don't know, those of them from the College of Medical Sciences, there's like something they have not told us. I thought after the vaccination, you don't need the, the, the mask. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Musa I saw Ambe, my very close friend, they were wearing masks. I don't know what, you shouldn't keep the information to yourself. Really. Uh, so I had to cut a number of paragraphs from my own uh, review. So I will not, uh, the review will not flow as I wanted it to be, uh, just for us to uh, meet the time. Uh, I started by saying, well, Professor Motora called me one day to say that he would be requesting for a favor. Uh, I did not think much of it. And when we met at the Senate meeting, he asked me to be the book reviewer uh, of his autobiography. I had no difficulty in agreeing. We discussed back and forth about the dates. He wanted other dates, but he settled for today. Incidentally, for me today, uh, today is the day back in 1983 when I joined the University of Manu. I'm happy to be part of your own success story, Professor Motara. Uh, you are such a good gentleman. Uh, I will skip a lot of the paragraphs, as I've said. In his early years, he gave an account uh, of his life. Most of the situation resonated with me. The children of those days belong to the community rather than to their parents, and those members of the community often did not spare the road. His father was a nomadic public servant. I'm sorry to use that. <laughs> moving from one location to another every now and then. And little Twinji led an exciting early life and met friends and had varied perspectives having stayed in several places. When his father acquired a gramophone, he quickly learned how to operate it, which probably led to his love for music and Owambe. He likes that. <laughs> uh, when, when a radio was added to the family possession, it even brought more excitement added choice for more news and more music. Uh, I skipped his life at his job uh, because the VC dwelt a lot on it, but he lived there for about three years and uh, obviously it has very profound effect on his life. It's very important for children, as I said, to, to stay for some time in the rural areas to invite some of our parents. Uh, in chapter three, life at Optic, High school he was. Uh, little Baba Tunji had a very good early education and indication of the importance attached to it by the then Western region government. When you read the book, uh, this, this keeps ringing uh, in your brain. The autobiography gives an insight into the opportunities available to people in the region even before independence because of the purposeful leadership they had at that time. Uh, this also manifests to me, in hindsight, in the two years that I spent uh, at the National Universities Commission. I noticed very well that uh, the church and the state in the western part of the, in the southern region of the country were united in the dissemination of knowledge. Uh, many of the locations he mentioned in his book I have visited, as, uh, as well 
information deposit when I was chairman of SCOPO in NDC, evaluating applications for private university. I was, of course, excited in several instances to meet my kids and team who are deaf at exploiting ecosystem services to ensure pastoralism and to speak full day, much to the delight of my committee members. At the Baptist High School, he was. Although they tried to instill religious discipline in him and fellow students, which includes hard work, he was a bit like a Jessica to use his word. Uh, this resulted in his being asked to repeat class two. I attribute this to the absence of his parents, who, despite giving him unconditional love, would, would not have hesitated to pull his ears, uh, to pull his ears when he misbehaved. The fact that he was asked to repeat class two caused him considerable stress. He, however, quickly learned his lesson and a change of attitude and forge ahead. While in year three at Iwo, another important thing happened in his life. He fell ill and had to be taken to the hospital several times for tests and treatment. This illness, if you read in his book, has profound influence in his attitude to life. His father had initiated the plan for him to join them in England, and his uncle had helped him to procure a passport and yellow card. He also applied for visa and visited the consulate in Ibadan several times, but could not get the approval. What I found very interesting about his views was the fact that he had the temerity to follow up on his visa application uh, at the British High Commission on his own several times until he got it. Most young chaps would have felt intimidated and discouraged. He finally completed his travel arrangement and left during the bad days of the Civil War. He arrived in London with the warm embrace of his parents and settled down in Battersea, famous for his park, his powerhouse, and his dog home. Uh, he was somehow feeling miserable from what was later diagnosed as chronic meningitis and was promptly attended to. This is written for more than six months. You will not fail to not notice the yeah. premium the place on health, education, and social welfare. While undergoing treatment in the hospital, a nurse even volunteered to, to take and took him to the famous Trafalgar Square, and most, uh, the most visited destination for Nigerians in those days. He has a picture in the book of himself and the nurse, the pigeons all over him. Uh, the pigeons of Trafalgar Square were so popular with tourists who took delight in uh, having them pick the brains from the farm while taking photographs. They multiplied so uncontrollably and became a nuisance. And uh, remember the then mayor, mayor of London, Ken Livingstone, who was also called Red Ken, uh, who once described them as flying rats, took drastic measures, including controversial ones, to get rid of them. I wonder why Nigerians go these days. He survived very well in London, despite the initial hiccup. He tried several sporting activities, such as swimming, skating, and judo, but was put off for one reason or the other. He did not indicate in the book whether he also tried playing football. Despite his initial interest while he meet while he was at Iwo. London, of course, is the football capital of the world. Over 13 famous clubs, and one of them, Chelsea, is a stone throw away from across River Thames uh, from Battersea. He was politically active, like many Nigerians in London, and in his own case, more than the average Nigerian. For many Nigerians, the speaker's corner, corner in Hyde Park, uh, the home of free speech, is a fascination in London. Uh, he seemed to have inherited the socialite trait from his father, because according to him, his father's house was the center of attraction to Nigeria, and many get together were taking place at this time. His, brother and his, his brothers and sisters, at some point, were under foster care to enable their parents to work and earn a living, a whole map of the British welfare system. I'm sure no Nigerian government will ever try this. Uh, he described several times in this chapter, the work he undertook at home and the uh, social event he attended. He was, however, remarkably reticent by writing only one sentence regarding his frequent on court 
visit to Soho in the city of Westminster. Soho is a notorious part of central London, famous for its theatres, cinemas, and fashion shops, among other things. If you know, you know. <laughs> he coped reasonably well at school and had some, but had some difficulties with his A-level. He was planning to receive or repeat when it was suggested to him that he should go to America and he agreed to do so. So he sort of obtained, uh, he sort of obtained uh, admission and uh, paid his fees and got visa to the US. And uh, in January 1972, he left for Oklahoma. He arrived in New York and later proceeded to Oklahoma. He was quickly evaluated and was exempted from some courses and in some instances was taking 400 level courses straight from LA. I always marvel at the flexibility of the American system. He once had a similar case at the Federal University where one of our lecturers of less memory was considered for professorial appointment. He submitted his papers, including his transcripts, which revealed that in some cases he took undergraduate and postgraduate courses simultaneously. This was very odd to many members of council, and despite the fact that Professor Adedoja, my co-chancellor, and myself, the vice chancellor, assured them that it was possible under the American system, they refused to understand. We had to write to the university for confirmation and were vindicated. Uh, so we need to be a little bit more flexible in our system. And that this got me thinking, and I will be advising the vice chancellor privately on some of these issues. While in America, he made many friends being the jovial person in the East. His life in America was life of studies, of work, and major. Combine this with remarkable sincerity, and he was able to obtain degrees in reasonable good time. He was so much into parties, and on one occasion, he earned him a quick notice with his mates. Uh, the apartment was the center of attraction for Nigerians for organizing and uh, coordinating parties. He was well known for his flamboyant dressing, beautiful dates, and dance steps given by the supervisor, Dr. Mary Williams, in the book. He was so much in the church that he had no difficulty recollecting the names of artists and their good tracks. The jazz is a music genre that originated from the African-American community of Louisiana in America's deep south. Uh, back home, despite his uh, uh, busy agenda went on many of these, despite his enjoyment of life in America, and despite the fact that he has had many offers and could even marry one of his dates and follow a passport to American citizenship and remain in America, uh, or even join his parents in London, he opted to return to Nigeria. Uh, his courageous decision to return home was most remarkable, but the fact that he stayed put in Nigeria and refused to check out the language he used in those days, despite the widespread frustration of the mid 80s was even more remarkable. He returned to Nigeria with the best of intentions and the right, the right frame of mind for his noble mission, namely that of investing in Nigeria. And he did a good job at that. He has even trained two generations of doctors in one family and in one instance, teaching one of the mothers with the next one in the womb. <laughs> He mentored numerous students, junior colleagues, and was mentored by his senior, whom he mentioned in the book. Needless to say, he may not have returned to Nigeria and met many of the world class senior colleagues he mentioned, but keep this being in place. How times change. Interaction with students, both as a teacher and in the halls of residence, which he documented in his autobiography, were exemplary. One particular case you mentioned, which I'm familiar with because the gentleman involved visited me in my office and he said it's quite not worth it. I was quite excited when the gentleman brought his wedding card to me and he introduced himself recently when he was to remarry. Uh, the victim treat, treat your fellow human being as you would like, want to be treated. It's a victim of all religions, which many of the so-called religious persons people overlook. Not opportunity. 
uh, on one of the one other account he gave uh, that was uh, was that of a budding academic who was facing frustration in his MSc work when he was introduced to Professor Montara by the university pioneer dean of postgraduate studies, Professor John became an assistant. He was able to realize his potential and excel both in my degree and University of Nigeria where he went to do his PhD. The gentleman rose through the ranks to become professor and vice chancellor of this university. He also went on to become the secretary to the government of Congress. Hello? No, no. Hello. Never know who you yes. meet along the line. Do good unto all that come your way, and at the very least, you are reward of heaven. Yes. And then the chapter on family life, although the chapter is relatively small, but if you read the book, you will not fail to notice that the common thread throughout the book was the family. Yes. Yes. The is by any standard, a family man, the initial meeting with his wife to be was certainly God ordained. He met her several times in favorable circumstances and it got him thinking. The rest, they say, is history. The visit to London by his fiance to meet his parents, to do some shopping at the death of his sister at the same time, and the reaction of all of them brought tears to my ears. The reaction of his parents and their visitor, as well as Baba Tunji and his big brother, my put in bracket ATM, I will give you the, the, the whole thing to read because you seem to have turned him into your ATM machine. <laughs> so thank you, man. left, right, left, and right. Man. The marriage and the parties were, of course, done in a very big way, as is typical of the groom. And remember the influence of the gramophone and the radio of the early child. Uh, then, chapter nine. On tribute, this was the chapter that I enjoyed most. It was tribute, tribute, and tribute. Of all the chapters, this was the best. And the last, and in the last two decades, I've come to realize that life is more about how many lives you have positively influenced, not how many degrees or material things you have accumulated. The chapter started with a tribute written by his wife, whom he fondly calls Lucy. She adopted an friendship poem to her husband, John Paul, uh, which she says encapsulates the love between Baba, as she calls her husband and herself. Of course, she eloquently described in her own words the type of person Baba is, and finally failed to talk to her together. To her Baba can many things. Uh, I hope I pronounce it. <laughs> Then came the glowing tribute from Adelaide, Polake, and Benga to their father. And as I've said earlier, the family is at the heart of our this life. The chapter also has writers from colleagues, and friends, and associates. Remarkable that there are tributes from all sorts of medical students, uh, and so on and so forth. The fine tributes paid to you by your students, the accolades by your colleagues, and the encomium here from me by your friends. An inspiring manifestation of the high esteem in which you are held. These, of course, are in addition to those of your nuclear family, their affection, their confidence, and best wishes were certainly genuinely expressed. Um, what I read in this chapter tells me that you can hold your head very high, beat uh, your chest, walk home, even with a swagger, even push in your chest. In Britain, they would say you are a jolly good fella. I do not know how they describe people like you in America, but my people here in Nigeria, with their penchant for directly translating their mother tongue into the English language, would say you have pride. <laughs> you have more than pride to distinguish yourself. Uh, I, I skip that on CV. Uh, Professor Baba Tunji Omotara, as I've said earlier, has thoroughly enjoyed reading your biography. You will be retiring at the time when epidemiologists will be needed in large numbers. You alluded to this earlier. I say this because gazing into the crystal ball without being a prophet of doom, I see a future of the world, of a world with frequent epidemics, the combination of climate change, increasing capacity to modify viruses, and the 
massive dislocation in forest ecosystems, bringing wildlife in close proximity to man, giving opportunities for zoonosis to spread, are all factors that are bound to result in frequent emergence of epidemics in the future. Of course, advances in biotechnology will better enable humanity to develop vaccines faster than we are able to do now. I must say once again that I not only just enjoyed reading your biography, but also was well inspired by it. The clarity with which you express yourself is an eloquent testimony of the sound liberal education you received over the years. The sentiments expressed are also a manifestation of the high level of emotional and social intelligence on your part. Of course, there are unfinished business. My request for the creation of masters in public health is yet to materialize. Don't feel guilty, though. You have paid your dues. Work never ends. I'm aware. I'm aware of your decision to relocate to Ibada as soon as you retire and open a new chapter of your life of mentorship. You can still visit us and tie some of the loose ends for us. I must say that our selfish feeling of loss of your services is tempered by this belief that others should also benefit from your selfless services, at least post-retirement. As you are about to pass your lecture microphone to all the ladies and gentlemen you listed in your department, the younger generation, please be rest assured that you have acquitted yourself. You gave academic leadership at the College of Medical Sciences you gave stewardship to your family, and you have been a very good friend to many. In the process of your 40 years of sojourn here in Maiduguri, you survived the difficult days of the Buhari India Gone regime of the early 80s because of your discipline. You survived the structural adjustment program of the Babangida administration of the late 80s and early 90s because of your entrepreneurship. You survived the bombings by Boko Haram, which was not mentioned in the book, in the last decade by the grace of God. You even survived the infection by the coronavirus in the last few months, again by the grace of God. I think you are still destined to such more life, perhaps in a different setting when you retire. Congratulations, Junji, in advance as you retire, and congratulations for a well written first edition of your biography. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Jupila, you are my has been a detailed a vivid review of Professor Babatuki Motara's book titled The Odyssey of My Life. Broad also added a touch of humor. Found it readable, found it enjoyable, found it enlightening, found it educating. So we'll put hands together for him once again. Time is fast, then, the chairman, Mr. Gates, ladies and gentlemen, we move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the unveiling of the book and its presentation. Before we go on to the quick launching that we shall have today, uh, to do this for us, it's another person than the Vice Chancellor, Bachelor of this University, person of Professor Liu Shugaba, please come forward to be unveiled. Sent this book to the public. So I'll put hands together for you.
I hereby present it to the public for use by employees, by mentors, and by all and sundry. I present this to this community. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Vice Chancellor, for revealing and presenting this book to the public. Our presence here is a mark of honor for this great, diligent, and erudite professor, Professor Babakishi Bayomi Motara. Our substance will be appreciated I will appreciate the efforts of this professor. Our Vice Chancellor, Professor Ali Shigaba, is here. Please do something on behalf of the university, sir. Microphone. Yes. And let the Vice Chancellor of Yobe State University, Professor Sandabi, please get ready. Sorry. <laughs> Vice Chancellor of Bono State, please. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish. Why is the topic of this? For a son that could not be discussed at this moment. I'm sure to do something that is significant. Professor Omotana has served this university in many universities. His last statement. Was the last responsibility was as a council member who had done so well for the council. We find that so much. And it was said by Dr. Jenny and me, why do you do it? And although you intend to move away to Ibada, we will still engage you when I can stay. We are shocked. More and more. So, five copies and a song that will be discussed with Professor Montana later on. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. We want to call in on the Vice Chancellor of Bono uh, State University Post, Professor uh, Umar Kerry Sandabi. You're welcome, sir. Let's put our hands together for you, please. Who want to call in on the Vice Chancellor, your best state university, President M. Dara, or your representative? Thank you. We move on to calling on the Chief Medical Director of UMTH, represented by CMAC, Professor Sandabi. Mm -hmm. Let's put our hands together for you. Vice 
500,000 around it, and the class 92, 94, we announce later. Thank you very much, uh, the Chief Medical Director of UFTH. Who wants to call in on the MD, Federal Neuropsychiatry Hospital? So around. Call on the Executive Secretary, Global State, PHCD. Oh, let's put on some better for him. Uh, 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 my mentor and the teacher of teachers. I think I'm just coming in now, but I feel highly honored to be part of this occasion. And on behalf of the board and management of Federal Neuropsychiatric Hospital, I'm Found five copies for three hundred thousand. Five copies for three hundred thousand dollars. And a personal copy for hundred thousand dollars. Another five hundred thousand. Personal copy. Let's put on to get up for it. We move on to calling on the thirty-three set. For no stage hospital management board, the professor Aras Alaji. For no stage hospital management board, Professor Aras Alaji. Arab, Arab Alaji. Professor Arab Alaji. Vice Chancellor, Chairman of the Federation, distinguished personalities. On behalf of hospitals management board of no stage. That oversees 38 hospitals across the state. I wish to launch five copies of this book with any disclosed amount to announce later. Thank you. Undisclosed amount. Who want to call in on His Royal Highness Oba Alaji Hassan? Allow you so on behalf of the new back home. And please, because of time for time constraints, uh, let's. Let Dr. Chief just uh, jump on. Twenty thousand naira. Thank you so much, Carlos. We would like to call on the 1983 to 1987 set. Are you here, please? Thank you. 1983 to 1987 set. Might be switching back, back, back. 
of medical doctors. That's Professor Abasa. Okay. So, uh, one student, one project. So, uh, enough to say in a game, in reset. Okay. Uh, the first pioneer, in a game, in reset. We call that set 21 in a fix. That's what Concord newspapers. Because so uh, that was the time when the prime minister, the vice chancellor, then was having issues with the Nigerian Medical and General Council. Despite the fact that the University of Medical and Medical School at that time was competing favorably with even the pioneer medical schools but for interpersonal conflicts and what have you. When described in different numbers, and here we are today, a class of 21 people, 21 students, more than half of the 21 are professors, former, former chief medical directors of various hospitals, and even a minister of state for health, amongst us. And, uh, so you can see that we are not in a fix. So, uh, I just said that. Okay, I want to, on behalf of the class of 83, the first set of medical students in the best of I am not here to get hard copies at 20,000 naira each, and then four paperbacks at 10,000 naira each, making a total of five copies at the rate of 20,000 naira each. And Four. Four. Yeah, but let's put our hands together for Professor Abasa. Let me send this set. Ninety-three to ninety-seven. Please announcement, please. Uh, where are the ushers? Distribute the piece of paper for us to put our names and then our donations there. Please let that let that be done quickly. Who want to call in on Dr. Kuba M. Singh, Director of Medical Services, Ministry of Health, Bono State. Sorry, okay. Sorry, what's the name? My name is Dr. Ubakar Hassan. Um, Hassan. I happen to be the class rep of the third set, that is the 1985 set. And one memory of a uh, for those of us, Professor Omotara was a mentor. In fact, he was like a senior brother. The age gap was not so much. And he was so trendy, friendly. And many of us used to sneak into his parties. You can be rest assured. That is why we still. We will, if I will never forget him, and he's still young in our heart. So, on behalf of the third set of this great medical school, we want to launch 10 copies of hardcover at the cost of 200,000 naira plus $100. Our teacher has students in the diaspora also. Thank you very much. 200,000 naira plus 100 dollars. Please, I want to vote on behalf of the fourth set. 200,000. Can I vote on behalf of the fourth set? We are donating, we are donating, we are donating five copies to the college library. Thank you very much, sir. On behalf of the 86 set, yeah, I want to know. Strange, please. Yeah, Can we have a piece of? Have we to spread a piece of paper? Who right. want to call in on Dr. Kuba? Yeah. Say to director, please. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up.
My name is Arthur. I am presenting the class of EPS. The following people have lodged uh, each copy. So, Uba MCU launched a copy for 40,000. Professor Adin Kamadapro launched a copy for 35,000. Dr. Senator Lawanjano launched a copy for 30,000. Dr. Suleiman Sanimu Saad launched a copy for 30,000. Dr. Musa Muhammad Amalai, a copy for 30,000. Professor Kalbi Chama, a copy for 30,000. Dr. Sadiq Abdullahi, a copy for 30,000. Professor Bala Mohamed Aoudou, a copy for 30,000. Professor Tita Mwanko Onukike, a copy for 30,000. Dr. Adamu Chima Obadu, a copy for 30,000. And Dr. Okiki, Okiki, Ichi, Okiki, a copy for 35,000. So, total of 350,000 or 11 copies from last one. Thank you very much. The class of 1988 to 1992. Please, if you must go away, kindly drop that piece of paper on which you have written the details of your launching phase. We now call on 1988 to 1992 set. Thank you. Professor Low Courage is launching. Professor Low Courage is what we call it. It's not a On behalf of the class of 1990, one of the largest copies of the book at the cost of $200,000. Professor Low Courage, we'll recall that that is launching the two copies for $50,000. Let's put out the $1,000. Yes, sir. Yes. 1991. Yes. 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 Five copies for two hundred thousand naira. Personal copy for thirty thousand naira. Thank you very much. Uh, the class of 2004 to 2008. Um, state government. Um, state government. Um, state government. Um, and the 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 Class of 
Community-based medical education here has made him to learn the Hausa language very well, and he speaks Hausa very well. With these few remarks, I want to thank Professor Motara very well again, once again, and uh, I now declare the lecture closed. Thank you. The events are closed, or the launching continues. Class 98, eight hard copies and 24 paper bags for the sum of 650,000. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Hi. 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 I have to do it. I can't do it. I can't do you <laughs> 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 